and shall we? <laughs> so Michael, so Michael and I had a conversation a little earlier, so I just want to start it out with this question because I am intrigued and I need more information. Mm -hmm. So when we were speaking a little earlier, someone in the audience had asked you a question about the bird, <laughs> about mending the bird's wing, and you shared, what information was that again? I know I'm going to get hemmed for this, <laughs> the rest of this campaign, but um, I'm very, very scared of animals. So the oh, fact that I had, to, oh, oh, oh. I had to work with a pigeon, of all animals, was just a daunting experience the whole way through. But we got there in the end, and I'm hoping no one thought, <laughs> yo, that guy was scared of the pigeon, you know? <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, it, was, it, was it was actually a long journey. Um, it took me two months to get used to it. <laughs> I'm just speaking about how far I came with it. It, it. it took me like two months to get used to the pigeon. I remember the early days, um, I, I used to walk into a room like this and, and uh, the woman would be like, you know, the pigeon there. And it literally felt like the biggest thing in the room ever. And I just couldn't do it. And then slowly, and, you know, slowly but surely, um, just getting more comfortable, and, you know, got there in the end. I overcame one of my fears, and then and then after that, I, I pet my first dog. So oh. that was that was uh, great. <laughs> See, yeah, give him some applause for that. Fear of animals is a real thing. My mother has a thing about cats, and so do I. So I understand your fear of it. Yes, I understand your fear of animals. So I want to flip it back just a little bit to talk to you about. You know, whenever I go to see a film in a movie theater, I never once think about the projection reels. I never think about the fact that it's on several reels and that you have to change them. So I'm just interested to know from your point of view, how interesting was that for you to learn and how interesting was it for you to be able to learn how to change those reels in like a split second? Because it was fast. It was, it was really fast. I was proud. <laughs> but I'm hoping no one's up there changing right, over right. that way. I'm sure we're all on digital now. I think that's that's fine. But back in the day, yes, it was very, you know, it was an art in itself. It's like a, you know, it was a proper um, part. Yeah, um, what, what, one of the early information that we received about that was someone like Norman, the projectionist, felt that they were a part of the film. Because if he doesn't present the film right, you're not receiving the film right. So it's like the same as the actor. If the actor ain't given a good performance, you're not gonna be connected to the film. Same thing with the director. If the director doesn't piece the film together properly, you're not getting the film right. So the projectionists really felt that they were part of the process. So um, that was what we received um, you know, as early information. And then it was kind of just um, going to this place where they, it was like the only place in England where they had old projections left. Um, it was in Kent, and very much just like learning how to do it. But I was so fascinated by it all. It just that how Stephen is, it was crazy to to think that, you know, especially now, it's like you just press play, or even in your yard, you're just, <laughs> in your house, you're just pressing play um, and, and watching a film. Whereas before you needed to put everything together and also rewind it, I mean like wind everything back up so that the next, people can get it again in the in the proper way. Sometimes that film will break halfway through the film and then the projectionist has to come in there and be like, all right guys, sorry, uh, you know, I'm gonna fix this and then you can watch the film. Like, that's crazy to me. No, I've totally been in a movie theater where the film, you're laughing because you know. <laughs> I've been in a movie theater where the film is broken and you see like this, it looks like burning, <laughs> it looks like burning film on the screen and, you, and the, the audience starts booing and they start oh. like throwing stuff at the screen, like it's a whole situation. So the fact that you've never experienced that because everything is digital is a blessing, my brother. Yeah. Trust and believe. <laughs> no, I, feel, I, I do feel lucky because that would just annoy me. <laughs> that would. <laughs> so let's switch gears again. Um, there are many powerful scenes throughout the film um, about resilience and strength. And I wanted to just know from your point of view, why are these themes so important to bring to the audiences today? Especially the theme of the mental illness and the schizophrenia that Hillary um, experiences and your patience and your kindness and your um, friendship with her in regards to that. 
I feel like um, the reason why it's important is because it's still so relevant. You know, where this Sam's writing about an experience um, that's very close to him, like how when he used to nurse his mother when he was like nine years old, set, and this is back in the eighties. You know what I mean? Or probably before that, but you know this a particular story is set in the eighties, and you know this is still stuff that happens now. I feel like we're a little bit more, you know, free to talk about these things now. Um, so you know the the issue is a little bit bit less, but it's still very relevant, and I think that's why it's important to talk on those things. So people feel a lot more comfortable, you know, and and kind of can find a way um, to try and help those people. You know, I I feel like Stephen is a great example of someone who is quite fearless. You know, he just really wants to help this woman that he knows was once, you know, in his eyes, just normal, you know, and that's all he wants um, to see her doing. He really believes that he can get her back to that, you know, but, you know, with science and research, it, it shows that there's just no control over it. Um, so Stephen's naivety is um, very like powerful in this because, you know, a lot of people just know, like Neil, he says, you can't help her. You literally can't, you know, um, but I feel like it's just, testimony to who Stephen is you know he's just a nice kid and he just wants to help yes Stephen is a nice kid but Stephen is also a resilient kid he's a very kind kid and he has a very gentle heart right so let's speak having said all of that let's speak about that scene the one where Hillary totally loses it in front of Stephen like she totally unravels in front of Stephen and even then Stephen is still willing to stay there and support her what was the rehearsal process like for you and Olivia regarding that particular scene? Because that scene was hard. Are you talking about the scene when he goes to visit her? And, when he goes to visit her and they're, and they're about to come and get her. Because uh -huh. there's a bit, there's a couple times. I know there's a couple it. times, but that one in particular. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd say with Olivia, being the actress that she is, you know, she's very raw and, you know, is very real with her performance. So we didn't rehearse, to be honest with you. We I didn't just, rehearse that scene at all? Not really, you know, wow. not really. In terms of that like, doing a full on rehearsal, so I would know how she would do it when the cameras were actually rolling. We never done that once. It would be more like she just saying the lines around where she would say it and, you know, kind of blocking. It was more, more so blocking and knowing where we are and where we need to be when the knock comes on the door and um, stuff like that. But actually, you know, her performance was never rehearsed. And that's just how she is. She, that's just how she works. You know, a lot of it wasn't rehearsed in terms of the stuff that we done together. You know what I mean? Wow, I'm I'm actually amazed to know that because that means that y'all were, for lack of a better way of saying it, ripping in in the process, and it showed up on screen, and it was real, and it was visceral, yeah. and it was vulnerable, and it helped the audience, including myself, connect to it. Yeah, I think um, like Olivia. Um, for me, authenticity and realness is really the approach to the to the art that I try to, you know, kind of deliver. I, I, I never want someone to watch my work and feel like they don't know this person or this just feels so far away from someone that could be like that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Um, and, and when I say that, for, for example, someone like Stephen, you know, the voice was super important because someone like Stephen would never ever talk like how I talk. Uh, no. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's very important to, to get that language and, um, you know, his vernacular right because you, you really want to be authentic to that person. So I feel like that was really important for me. Um, and, you know, like Olivia as well, it's like, for me, I love the rehearsals, you know, do, going through that process. It was the first time I had the luxury of doing that in my career. You know, everything else has kind of just been, kind of just get into it. And plus I really know the characters and I can identify people in the characters that I've played before. With Steven, I haven't really really met anyone like him. Um, so it's kind of really trying to find him, find his personality and find the stuff that he enjoys and he loves and actually knowing those things, you know what I mean? Um, so that process was really, uh, in, enjoyed, it, I enjoyed it a lot. Let's switch gears again yeah. and let's talk about Miss Tanya Moody who played yes. your mom. And Incredible. let's talk about how you and Tanya maybe rehearsed or maybe had conversations in developing a bond as son and, and mother. 